Okay. Uh, you know, we can absolutely take into consideration any recommendations or revisions that you all may have either now or if you see anything uh, within the coming days, then we can, if, if we don't hear from anybody, we'll assume everything is uh, okay. And I think we can still move forward with sharing it. With and then can we not go out and do an electronic vote for those who are not present so that you can feel comfortable in, in um, proceeding? I can check into that. I, I get conflicting um, feedback on that sometimes. So I, I just need to make sure that that wouldn't be a problem. I don't, I don't think it should be a problem, but I always like to clear that with our city attorney. That makes sense. <laughs> I thought last week she said no. I mean, at our last meeting, that that yeah, was not an through, option. She did go through a thorough explanation yeah. of that kind of stuff, but I, I'll go back. I don't mind going back just to make sure. And um, if she is still saying no, then we hopefully could, will be able to approve it in January. And I de 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 delete my comment then, because I wasn't in the last meeting. So okay. if you've already had the conversation, then then there's no need to, to uh, backtrack and ask again. Okay, okay. So we'll just see if there's a way that um, we can still release, release the newsletter. I don't know if it requires a vote. Well, I'll just have some conversation with them because I would hate to hold it up. I would too. Month or so almost. So I'll just see if there's a way that it can still be um, released to the community. Okay, so Ms. Mom, you're gonna check on that again? Yes, ma'am. All right. We're gonna move on to what's next on the agenda. What's the Salem Foundation introduction? Mr. Charlie Gardner, program officer. And I'd like to ask if, um, if, if Ms. Linda Dart could kind of introduce Mr. Gardner. I've had conversation with him, but I think she's had more conversation with him than I have. All right, Ms. Okay. Linda. Well, I have not had a long uh, time, but it seems like uh, Charlie and the other people on his committee really came together very quickly. Um, Charlie, you can correct me when you speak, but Charlie, as you said, is a program officer with the Winston-Salem Foundation, and uh, his group is working on a very interesting project, which I think would collaborate easily with this one. It's on the history of redlining. And of course, redlining was one of the reasons and the legacy of redlining is one of the reasons that we are where we are today. So um, Charlie has a lot of contacts and a lot of uh, information. So Mr. Gardner, you have the floor. Thank you so much, uh, Ms. Linda. I really appreciate the introduction and thank you everyone on the AHI committee for your time and providing a space for me to kind of share a bit more about our um, planned exhibit. Um, so the Winston Salem Foundation is planning to bring in, an exhibit to um, our community in the fall of 2021. Some of the details we we were hoping to bring it this year, but COVID just kind of pushed things off. And so we, um, but in some ways, it's been helpful that we've had more time because it's been allowed us to hopefully build better relationships with the community as we design and plan this exhibit. So um, it's an exhibit that is actually a, a national one. One of my colleagues saw the exhibit when she was visiting Cleveland and it has the a timeline that has like important moments, histories, timelines, stories from different eras going back to the reconstruction and Jim Crow through civil rights into kind of the post-civil rights and into today. And within the national timeline, there's opportunities to highlight local stories and events that shaped um, a specific community. So, you know, when in Salem, we could highlight the building of 52 and some of the highways, for instance, as a contributing factor um, that really disenfranchised um, the, the black population in our community and um, all, with a myriad of things. I, um, and so even though it is looking at redlining, it's not just about affordable housing. It's also looking at disinvestment in businesses. It's about health inequities, inequities in educational systems, how all these things are really interconnected. And 
the cool thing about the exhibit, it is interactive. Throughout, there's an opportunity for people who see the exhibit to write notes and contribute and pin them on the exhibit. Um, you, you, there's, um, there's a section at the very end that is also really has a space to look at a theme that is particularly important for community. And, and, and it could be, again, focusing on health inequities. It could be looking at um, businesses. It could be looking at like the future. It, it, uh, it, there's a lot of possibilities. And I, we're still trying to um, get a better sense of it all. And with, during our, my conversation with Linda and learning about AAHI's work, as particularly with really gathering stories from the community in these neighborhood groups, it's something that we would love to support and highlight and collaborate, you know, really offer this as a platform to highlight the good work that you will be doing and as well as some other groups as well. And so we had initially started to explore collecting our own stories, but when we heard about yours, we like, we don't want to reproduce or, or replicate something that you guys are hope, really are devoting a lot more time and energies to. And so um, what we would love to do is really just see if there's a way that um, the, the day is a bit up in the air, but again, it's fall of 2021. And we would love just to really help highlight some of these stories that you collected. And we find ways to support your work, whether it's communicating um, about the the collection to our networks, if possible, whether it's not, you know, um, during a conversation with Wanda, she shared that you guys might be in need of technology to scan documents and something. So that's something that maybe we could support and find ways to collaborate um, and really find a way to really like, share this work together um, and really highlight the good work of you all doing. So I'm happy to answer any questions, but that's just kind of wanted to present this idea and kind of get initial thoughts from everyone. Many years ago, the foundation did some work with neighborhoods. Now, when I say many more than probably 25 years ago, do you know if any of that information is still present? They actually went out and did neighborhood signage with um, neighbors, neighbors that they, communities that they found were, uh, being sustained, were being mobilized, were being energized? So um, I know back, yeah, back in the 90s, there was a lot with um, community-based, um, uh, asset-based community development. And a yeah. lot of that work we is kind of, um, in the end, was kind of under the umbrella of the foundation. It has since kind of developed as its own entity and we are still very much in support of the NBN and all the work that they were doing in supporting the neighborhoods. And so they're one of the people that we are going to be engaging on um, in this exhibit too. And one thing too, like in addition to just the exhibit itself, we hope to provide do different events. I know gatherings right now are very challenging. This is one of the reasons why we postponed it this to next year, hopefully we can do some type of limited gatherings um, and provide a platform for groups like NBN to highlight issues that are really, they care about within the community. So, um, you know, so really we hope we're still fine looking at different venues. We're still looking at different partners, but when I heard about AHI, I think it really resonated that our work aligned so much that we really hope that you guys could be a, a key collaborator in this project. Yeah, you know, th this is kind of prior to NBN. Okay. Um, prior to NBN. Uh, and it was um, talking about building social capacity and the whole, when the whole capacity word became apropos talking about building community. So it's it's a little before for that. It's when the Boston Thermal was being energized, East Western Restoration, uh, Liberty East Development, uh, South Side, um, several of those different neighborhoods were all involved with that process. Um, I, so I confess that even though I'm very interested in the history of Winston-Salem, I am a newcomer. My wife is from the community. I've only been here for a year though, but I can um, certainly reach out to some of my colleagues who've been with the foundation for um, 
for a longer period and um, follow up with that question. Thanks. Welcome to Winston. Thank you very much. I really appreciate it. Any more comments? Uh, thank you, Charlie. Uh, this is Annette Scipio. I have, uh, if the exhibit you're speaking of, uh, uh -huh. I saw one at our national convention a year or so ago, uh, and it's quite interactive, and there's a segment in it that really focuses on the community that the exhibit is in, which shows uh, the whole area maps of the community. So it would be our community and how redlining affected it. And it's a very, very powerful exhibit. And um, we had wanted, I'd asked the community development department to investigate bringing it to Winston and at the time they were interested because there was going to be a, a convening around affordable housing um, last June. And of course, COVID came. And so this is really appropriate again to bring that to, to Winston. It is a powerful exhibit. It is uh, truth uh, based on facts, documentation, that many people never understood existed. And uh, it is impactful for the entire community, not just the African-American community, but it can open up lots of discussions on industries like real estate, realtors. Our realtors, I've been one, license and pra practiced it. And believe me, there are a whole lot of perceptions that emerged historically that impacts how real estate is pro uh, promoted in this community and valued. And alone? so I am excited that Winston-Salem Foundation wants to um, bring this. I am so excited because I can I would love to join your committee to help Was she by bring herself? the right groups together and people together Was she by herself? because it is very, very powerful and uh, oh. it is timely. It is, it's oh. never too okay. late to talk about yeah. that because okay. we're still living okay. the impacts right. of that right now. So I'm very, very excited. And I think that uh, uh, I hate this. I'm not gonna, I am gonna speak for the committee uh, only because I always do. Uh, it is an exciting kind of project that this committee should be engaged in and connecting to because it is our history. So I'm certainly in favor of that and it would be just a very positive kind of uh, project for the committee to embrace. Yeah. Yeah, I, I'm glad. That's great that you, uh, Councilman Sophia, that you were able to see it. What community did you see it in? I, do you remember? Yes, we were at the National League of Municipalities, and it was in San Antonio, Texas. Okay. And uh, it was um, the panel about that. Well, there are the 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 three panels talk about redlining generally. And then the, the ones about the community right in the middle of the ex, ex exhibit, exhibit was so powerful that many of the people who attended who were uh, residents were able to write their stories. They yeah. came up and told stories about visiting San Antonio yeah. visiting their grandparents and oh that was my grandparents house it was right here this is what you're talking about i knew that community it was just such a powerful tool um and the exhibit was open the length of the five-day conference but yeah. um there were times when the um it was open where you could have real feedback with the people mm -hmm. there who put it together so it was it was quite powerful. Uh, I could see it coming here. I can see it uh, needing some time, though, for people to mm -hmm. re-digest, understand, redline, and having 
uh, some actual community discussions around it and yeah. uh, the feedback on neighborhoods. I mean, it was uh, it was very powerful in San Antonio, which is a larger community than ours. Mm -hmm. But um, boy, when you really saw the impact and people talked about their neighborhoods, it was it was a very rich experience. And that's a, something that I just connected the dots to right now, be thanks to your comment, um, is that there is an opportunity for people to write and be the interactive. And the, we were trying to figure out how can we collect these stories and so they're just not lost. And these are stories that could be shared with AHI as you collect your stories too, so that they could be a good home for um, the interactive portion of the exhibit so that when people, it, like if students want to learn about it, they can have this rich trove of stories and information that was also gathered. And one thing that we, the foundation is really aware of, thanks in part from the feedback we have had with community conversation is, yes, we need a rich conversation. We need this shared language, but we also need more. Like words are not enough right now. They should never have been enough, but particularly right now they're not. And so really, how can we use this as a catalyst for community organizing for action? And in the foundation, we have, um, been really thinking about the racial equity implications of our grant making for the past couple of years and thinking how can we bring this even in more unison with this exhibit. And so it's part internal, but also an external opportunity for everyone to share and contribute as well. And the good news about that exhibit and, because, and AAHI is that the, com the individual community panels there is research that goes on prior to the exhibit actually mm -hmm. uh, coming to town because these they're huge panels, very huge. Mm -hmm. And so one of the things that um, this committee could do, knowing that you're gonna come, there's gonna be a fall exhibit, talking to the developers of the exhibit, we could start having pre-discussions so that the content of what Winston-Salem was would be there on the permanent boards uh, yeah. ahead of time. See, there's some permanent data, then, mm -hmm. then there's this other data that just comes spontaneously exactly. when you start seeing it. So, um, and we do have some very um, interesting uh, details we could put into that about what how the effects of redlining. Yeah, um, and that's ex yeah, that's exactly like how to how do we select which stories we want to highlight on this exhibit? And like again, your expertise on this committee, your conversation that you have with these neighborhood communities and groups are all such a better and rich vision than that the foundation can do in a vacuum. And so we don't want to be in a vacuum. We want to really be listen to folks and learn and try to be really, again, highlight and support your work that you're doing and really provide a platform for you. Thank you. Any more comments? And Charlie, as I mentioned to you when we spoke, um, with the Human Relations Department, we are responsible for the fair housing law here in Winston-Salem. So we investigate claims of fair housing law violations, i.e. housing discrimination, um, for our locality. And so part of what we do is not only investigate, but we educate and we do outreach programs that would be very, very similar to what you're describing. And in the past, we've done um, gentrification symposiums. We've um, the Fair and Affordable Housing Summit, we do that every April, which is Fair Housing Month. So we've done those types of things where something like this would really complement a lot of what we are attempting to do with educating the community. And yeah. so I wanted to make sure I reiterated that with you, that certainly through AAHI, as well as the Human Relations Department, we would um, certainly be open, the department for sure, to working with you and collaborating with you to promote fair housing. And Red Line mm -hmm. is um, a part of the history of fair housing. So mm -hmm. well, a lot of people don't even know that. And they don't even 
even know what redlining is. And so I think it would be a great opportunity. Yeah, and one thing is we, I, I'm, right now I believe the exhibit is planned to be in the community for two months. Um, and so it's not just a week thing or one thing. It, 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 we, if we can find a, pro, a good home for it, that people can use throughout and then again yeah we we'll all want we want to really collaborate with other organizations and offer this to support events that they have planning to to really have it be a resource and also that will just bring more people to the exhibit and see it have this impact again because I, so many people aren't familiar with the history of redlining and the legacy and how it shapes our community today and really the more that we can share this, the more we can have a shared language and vision about how can we begin to undesign the red line. That's the name of the exhibit, undesign the red line. Um, and so, yeah. So, and again, like, I'm happy to find, again, the timing of it is still up in the air. And if we have something like a symposium that you're planning that we can kind of overlay that, that time period with, I think that's something we'd be very open to with, open to. And child, I think everybody, uh, the thing about that exhibit, sometimes folks think that redlining was really about housing, but redlining was more than that. It was about economic development, investment, everything about living was impacted by this so-called term yeah. or this systemic thought of redlining. It is, uh, and if you're African American and you read the context, you get very angry. You get very mad because even though I'm 70, <laughs> those who are younger than me don't ever understand. They don't know what it was like to live in a, a Jim Crow segregated nation and the tactics that were used to suppress and oppress us and this story is so, it's told in such wonderful terms with documents, uh, orig original documents that talked about that. And so in the context of redlining, it's beyond housing. It, it's really beyond, it's just the entire impact on a way of life for people. And, um, it is a very powerful thing. So I'm very happy that the foundation is, is moving forward with that because oftentimes in the city, our um, processes are so slow that uh, we would be, you could talk about it today and we'll do it in two years because of how things move in the city. So uh, I love it that the foundation would do it because historically the foundation has actually seeded a lot of initiatives in this community. Um, and yet we haven't always continued to fertilize the soil in which those seeds were planted so we don't have a continuous harvest. But believe it or not, we're today receiving a little bit of the impact of a lot of uh, the efforts the foundation has underwritten over the years. Uh, so it's just a glorious day I can see for the foundation to take on this particular topic that is a very sensitive topic and people don't like to talk about sensitive issues in this town. But uh, when we talk about social justice, that's a big, big opening right there. Thank you. Well, I'm glad that we can offer this as a resource and a service, and hopefully it does plant a lot of seeds that will be cultivated and grow. Are there any more comments? If not, thank you, Mr. Gardner. Thank you so for that, much. For that information. So we'll move on uh, to our next thing on our agenda. Uh, our Black History Month uh, webinar series. And first thing is uh, the format. Yes, and Miss Jane, I um, sent a loose format to everyone uh, several days ago via email. I hope 
hoping that everyone still has that because all it did was reflect what you discussed at your last AAHI meeting. And just to remind everyone, it was, um, discussed that there would be a webinar of sorts for each week during Black History Month in February, and that each week could focus on a different area that um, correlated with some of the subcommittees of the AAHI. So I know there was one um, week that would focus on civic groups, one week on neighborhoods, one week on education, and one week on businesses. I think those were the four. And the AAHI discussed at the last meeting that there was a need to have a facilitator for each of the um, weekly webinars and that perhaps it could be a panel, a very small panel of people to talk about that particular topic. And the, the goal was for the members of AAHI to introduce the webinar, maybe introduce the facilitator and then kind of step back and allow the community to have that conversation. So that is in a nutshell what you all discussed. And today you were going to discuss who some good facilitators may be those four weeks and even potentially who some good um, panelists would be for each of the four weeks because you were um, noting that Black History Month is only, it's, it's not that far away. And so um, you wanted to go ahead and get started on that so that it could launch during that first week of February. So that's the reminder of why we decided to, to schedule this special meeting for you today was primarily to talk about this. Okay. <laughs> uh, any comments about the format or oh, that was the format? Um, anybody have any presenters in mind? Yeah, this is I, I had thought about um, the uh, uh, format for the civic groups was to focus on the Panhellenic Council, have representation from the Panhellenic Council, but make sure that they represent all the group, whoever the persons are, that they know the history or some of the contributions of all the groups. I know we can't have all nine groups participate, so that would be important. And I thought about for our moderator, Denise Hartsfield, uh, because she's a native of Winston and is, is familiar with things that had happened over the years. And I'd also like to include as part of the civic group, the impact of the, the Masons and the Order of Eastern Stars so that everything would not be focused on Greek letter organizations. That was what I initially thought. I know there are a lot of other organizations, but we had to start somewhere. Thank you. Uh, anyone else would like to comment? Well, as she said, I think that would be a good start. For the elected leadership, I think it's an opportunity to pull together the old, the, the mid group, and the younger group to share um, likenesses as well as differences in the way times were at the time that they were serving. Uh, some of the same challenges that are uh, focused on today are the same ones that have been going on for a long time. I think we have enough older folk. Of course, they're moving on to uh, different plateaus in their lives, uh, but I think there's still enough older ones around that we can get to engage. So we need to work on some younger folk. Is what you're saying. Well, I mean, the, the older folk I'm thinking of, of, of the Newells and the Vic Johnsons and, and that group, uh, we've lost a lot of them in that arena. Uh, but how can we pull them into the fold to talk about challenges they had, Vic had on the school board that may still be uh, the same ones that Shay Woodbury, who's the current chair, uh, sees that, that kind of dialogue. Okay. So, Ms. Joycelyn, do you have um, someone in mind who could facilitate that discussion? Hmm. Ms. Joycelyn? Hmm. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll work on that piece. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
Um, and, and just, I didn't say this part, but um, during the last meeting, the AAHI discussed uh, trying to limit each webinar to approximately an hour or so due to people's short attention spans, especially these days. I thought it was shorter than that. <laughs> oh, really? Okay. <laughs> oh, no, I'm just saying, it, it, it definitely no more than an hour, but I would say, well, I guess it depends on how many people you have on the panel. That and how much you think people are going to retain. So, right. you know, in an hour conversation, you all may retain 10 minutes of the, the uh, documentation. So, you know, what do we think the highlights are going to be? Make sure that they are presented early on in the format or in some document form that we can say at the end of this presentation, this document is available for your use as a community. So, Mm -hmm. uh, how, how can we do both? You know, you have some folks who say, well, that was one long number. How you talk long? Uh, mm -hmm. But at the same time, you have folks who say that that's enough. I mean, I look at people who now say the COVID numbers need to, you know, you stop talking about them on a daily basis, but it's a real problem. So, and, and it's a real fact. So how, how do we try to reach all of the groups and still have meaningful content presented to all of them? And that and would I even be one of my questions for the for the groups is how are you still functioning in amidst the COVID uh, situation? And I think just to tag on to what um, Annette and Jocelyn said, we of the committee would need to be really specific in terms of what we want them to talk about. Right. It, it can't be an open question. It's got to be very specific. And we have to tell them you have X number of minutes because uh, we can't be on there forever. And one of the things I would suggest is that think about the core purpose for this discussion. The purpose is to stimulate, well, to tell our history, but also to engage people to contribute their part of the story also. So it's a presentation, but it's not just for the presenters to do all the talking. It really should be a time where folks can ask questions if they never heard of it about, but to also share their experiences around that, that topic. Um, if you take all the time telling a story, you won't get other people's stories. And we want other people's input. Now, whether we want them to take that, their input, and do something, make a submission for them, right. uh, make a story that they can share at that point. You got to sort of figure out what is it we really want to do. We, I thought we were going to stimulate discussions around our history, uh, what has happened, but also gather people's stories. Because I don't want you to forget the purpose of this initiative is to collect memories and stories and document what has happened in our community. And so, you know, it's past and present. So I, I would challenge you to think about what is it we really want to achieve because then it will tell you exactly how you might want to lay it out. So so is our, go ahead, I'm sorry, go ahead, Linda. Councilwoman Scipio, uh, my only concern would be if we only have, say, 50 minutes to an hour, I'm not sure that would be the time to collect the stories. I was in a recent um, Facebook situation similar to that, and we really didn't have time to do anything. But on the chat, we could collect, and we'll have to figure out how to do it, but That's on the right. chat, we could collect the person's name, contact information, let them tell us what they would like to share. And then we would have the homework where we'd have to contact them later. But I don't think we can do it on that particular um, venue because we never get out of there, particularly if you got a very chatty person, we never get out of there. But we can certainly collect their information and then someone, if it was like an oral history, they wanted to share an oral history, I'd have to contact them. If they wanted to share something about their business, I think that's Mr. Um, Fulton, he'd have to contact them. So I think we could certainly use it as a place to grab somebody. Um, I think, yeah. 
Yeah. I agree. And I think the dialogue between the moderator and what and the committee representative could focus on encouraging people to submit their story. That that's something we could make sure that the two of them are projecting, that we right. want you to share your story, why it's important. But I think for the presenters to let them share briefly about the impact of their those organizations. Well, that ends up being one or two people's perspectives. So you got to be real careful not to be one-sided in the presentation. Right. So let me just say that, uh, Ms. Dark, uh, the story of your grandfather's movie theaters. <laughs> so when you, when someone mentions them, as being there, there was it was an economic impact to our community, true. But the real impact it had on residents has to come through their stories of right. experiences. And right. that is what we really want to trigger that uh, when they hear the Lafayette or if they hear the Lincoln, all of a sudden you can walk back and they can share a memory. Yes, they couldn't do it on, on this webinar, but right. we certainly want to encourage them to talk about and give their stories. Who were the people who were there? Why did they come there? You know, I don't think anybody would ever believe that as children, uh, nine, 10 and 11 years old, we could go to the movies on Saturday mornings and not have an adult accompany us. <laughs> Absolutely. And, and, and we would walk there. We would walk several miles to get there. Uh, and somehow it was okay. It was a lifestyle and we were safe. And, uh, but you got to hear those stories. So um, I love, I think there's such a richness that I think we're all on the right track that well, uh, whatever we talk about is hopefully will trigger people uh, to say, yes, I remember that. Uh, we need the Greek organizations, the IOTAs did the debutante ball, but That's the ball in mind. itself was not, that was the ultimate event, but the programming prior to the ball was a whole nother series of things for young ladies to get the social graces. Um, and then there was this other sorority that did the Cinderella ball. Um, yeah. and, and, you know, what was all of these groups about? The, and then I'm glad you mentioned and that the Masons and the Eastern Star. Mm -hmm. Oh, mercy. How, oh, every, people were joiners. And uh, they, but being a joiner gave them certain special things. It built character, gave the leadership quality was there. So it's so much uh, to share, but I, I, I agree. As long as we remember, we want to make sure that folks get an opportunity or get motivated to share their story with us at some point in time. <laughs> And, and their pictures. <laughs> and their pictures. And and maybe that's something we can incorporate too in our presentation is some pictures from some of the older activities. Yes. Uh and but but we would this would be webinar format. So the only way and correct me if I'm wrong, as presenters, we would be interactive, but for the public to be interactive, they would have to be going through the chat feature, correct? Yeah. And that's what I was going to address. Um, yeah. Frank, um, I know you're on the call, and Larry, could you all chime in with that, your thoughts in terms of could the public be interactive with that type of format, and if so, how? Would it be only through chat? Um, could you all, like, lend us your expertise there? This is Frank. I'm going to have to let Larry weigh in on that. He's our stream master. <laughs> Larry, Let me, uh, you know, Larry, sometimes multi, um, uh, juggling multiple duties. Let me walk across the hall real fast, see if he's, I see he's in on the call, but he may be in the middle of doing something else. Right. And right the, back. 
the most recent call I was on, um, people could not, the audience could not communicate with other audience members. Um, you could only communicate with the host and then the host would pick certain questions and right. respond to that. But again, we only had time for the host to respond to about four questions at the most. And that was, it ran a little bit over an hour. So, um, you know, like I said, we use the webinar to capture that person's information and then we get back to them afterwards and really get them engaged. Right. Like maybe each segment should should end with how you can get involved. Share your story yeah. with us. Every yeah. that could be a standard question that each uh, yeah. group puts out there. We want or you know the the solicitation of involvement could be something that right y'all could could uh, have a, a standard message about. And Director Wanda, you will have to advise me on this. So if we want to get this ready for February, I don't think there's any way we can do this at one meeting in January. And so I'm not saying that we have to vote on stuff, but I really see the need for having emails back and forth in terms of uh, step one, step two, step three. And then when you come together the one time in January for your meeting, all of that will already be done. Carlin can put it on our, um, on our agenda. And it's just a matter of going through it and approving it. But there's got to be a lot of back and forth. And oh, absolutely. we're going we're gonna to have to either do phone calls or emails or something, because we just can't do it in one sitting. That is so true. That is so true. And um, I'm thinking that what would help is if each um, committee facilitator, who actually would be representatives from the AAHI, could go ahead and put on paper the way they envision um, the panel and whoever is going to be moderating the discussion, who they imagine those people being, who who are those people? And so that that is a huge thing right there because once those people are identified, then you all can move on to identifying, okay, what do the questions need to look like? And perhaps each of those um, webinars, the people who are involved in those webinars, they can decide that for their respective webinar. Instead of everybody trying to help everybody do their webinars, right. the AAHI representative be responsible for coordinating that information for that particular webinar. So for those four subcommittees that are represented, um, those would be the people who would need to kind of spearhead that. Um, but I know that neighborhoods is, um, Ms. Williams, I don't know um, how, I don't know if she, how aware she is of what has been going on with planning this. So that would be something that we would just have to make sure she knows about. And Carla and I, between the two of us, can try to make sure that happens. And then um, I'm trying to see, um, Ms. Annette, you are with civic groups, right? Right. Okay. And business, we said, was uh, Mr. Fulton? Okay, because yes, I'm just in front of me. And realistically, so perhaps, should we should we stick with the? There are four of us on this call that have been in, more involved than the others. So realistically, should we stick with the ones that kind of know what's going on, or do you think it's going to be easy to bring the others on board? Can well, you I mention those say, four again? Can you mention those four again? Sure, sure. And I was going to suggest for those who have been involved, especially the past couple of months or so, that maybe um, you all could team up with that. Oh, okay. Person. Yeah, mm -hmm. if you're not already that person. And so maybe you could team up with um, the others to make sure, like for instance, if somebody on the, who's been on the calls wanted to team up with Mr. Fulton, or if someone wanted to team up with Ms. Williams, they could do that to make sure that they're kind of caught up to speed, but it won't pull everything backwards, you know, that we won't lose any time. That's a good suggestion. Okay, okay. And the four, Ms. Linda, were um, neighborhoods, and that's Ms. Williams, and then um, education. That's Ms. Penn. Okay. And, and then, then civic, civic and civic business. Groups. Okay, mm -hmm. I got business. it. I got it. Thank you. Okay, you're welcome. 
What's the fourth? What's the fourth group? Businesses. Did we not do churches? Not in that initial group. Okay. These Who's are the, the four church? topics. These are the four topics for the webinars, right? Right. Right. One okay. topic per week. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. And um, I'm gonna say this, uh, Miss Miss Dark. Uh, the archives has some wonderful photos that I know exist that can be shared to, as stimulation mm -hmm. for a lot of these discussions. Um, and um, I just know there are a lot. And uh, so I think that would be, you know, the photos themselves could be the source for the discussions. We could do a very brief PowerPoint, maybe five. You know how you share your screen? Yeah. We could do maybe five photos, yeah. um, some of the better ones or some of the ones that involve the most people. That would be easy to do. That's not a problem. I think the hardest place is going to be neighborhoods because I don't remember having... Oh, we know what we do have pictures from those neighborhoods because the society did... Uh, we did a calendar on neighborhoods. So let me take that back. Uh, social, civic and so, uh, social groups might be a little more of a problem. I'm just trying to go mm -hmm. back into my mind about what we had in the photo collection. No, we've got it. We've got it. You got enough. Yeah. Okay. And I'm thinking each group would, could be, what I was thinking that whoever represents the pan hell that, that I would ask them to make sure they check with each member of the pan hell to get something from them so that it won't just be one or two groups focused on yeah. and they could share pictures if they don't have a, a, a short history that we can e extract information from. And, and Mr. And Mr. The, Nett, how would you how, has a, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Ms. Joycelyn. If community development has not um, archived permanently the neighborhood pieces, they have a lot of the neighborhoods before redevelopment um, in their, had them in their possession. The whole 11th Street area, what Boston Thermal was like, what the Green Street area was like uh, before, uh, and most recently with Green Street before the ballpark came into place. Loose Street. I mean, they, they should have, like I said, if they if they have not gotten rid of them, they should they had a lot of those pictures. Thank you, Miss Johnson. I'll go check because um, some we got all new people over there, uh, and I'm not sure if they know where the pictures are, but we'll check on that. Thank and, you, uh, Jeffrey. 150 years ago, ago, Frank and uh, Larry Jeffrey should have someplace in those collections, some of the uh, pictures from some of the neighborhood groups? Um, I'm, I'm sorry to say that actually Jeffrey doesn't or didn't. Um, some time ago, we went looking for quite a bit. Of, we went looking to see what might be available. And the vast majority of everything Jeffrey shot is all city employees and city officials and things mm. that were for the city newsletter. Wow, okay, thanks. And Miss, Miss Annette, one thing I was going to mention is that um, it would, I don't know how you may plan to narrow down who would be in your panel discussion. So Miss Annette, I don't know how that would be narrowed down because if you look at the Divine Nine alone and then you include the Eastern Stars and some others, I don't know how, I guess that would be for your committee or for you to decide, like, how would you narrow that down in terms of deciding? Because really, you don't probably want, my recommendation would be that you probably not have more than three people if you're doing a panel discussion because you only have an hour. And even that may be pushing it. And so I don't know how you would think of, in terms of trying to narrow down who is going to represent what. Would you have one person representing the Divine Nine, one person representing um, the Eastern Stars and the Masons, and then one person representing something else? I, I don't know, but that, that would yeah. be- Yeah, and that would be, that's what I thought, that the Divine Nine would be able to speak for 
all of them, but they would have to do their homework. And so it may not be the current president because as we, as we have alluded to, a lot of new people are coming in and so some of them don't know the history. But that was my reason for involving Denise because I know she and I grew up together and we know a lot of that, that type of history. So I think that whoever we get from the Divine Nine, they need to have that kind of foundation as well so they can speak to the general contributions of sororities and fraternities in Winston-Salem and right. reference some of those things. Okay. Okay, but those will be the things that we'll be following up on with you all. Um, you know, my staff, thankfully, I have a few people on this call and they've been following this too. So we will be working with you. I don't want you to feel like you're out there by yourselves trying to figure it out. We will certainly be happy to lend um, whatever knowledge we have. We've, we've put on many things like this. So um, we would be happy to work with you and to try to make sure this stays on track and to make sure that um, all the holes are filled in. And that was one of the main reasons I sent that little outline to you from the last meeting, because you could see where the holes are. It's very right. specific. But then also that's not even touching on the questions, you know, what questions will be um, asked. So that'll probably be something that could be determined once the panelists and the presenters are determined. Is that right. like steer and decide? Because as someone mentioned, some people are chattier than others. So mm -hmm. that'll help you to determine the number of questions you need and, and, and what kind of area, like the scope of the questions, you know, how far they need to go, just depending on who you have speaking. But we'll right. So that we won't detain people today because there's no way we can get through all of that today. So we'll be following up with you. All right, thank you. You're more than welcome. All right. Uh, would anyone else like to uh, add additional information about that uh, project? No. All right, then. Um, if all minds are clear and this will end our meeting, we'll, we will adjourn. What is, is our mean? next meeting date? Is that the first Wednesday in January? Yes, ma'am. January the 6th at 2 p.m. Okay. Be Zoom again. Okay. But of course, like I said, we'll be in touch definitely with emails and, um, and phone calls as necessary. We'll, we'll, we could even do a virtual format for some, with some of you if we need to, to talk about things if you need that. Um, but we, we're going to figure out how to get this done because February will be here before we know it. Uh, I do have one other question. Did For our actual webinars, are we going to have them like weekly on a specific date or will they be giving us the dates that we can select from and, and what time frame? You are really in my head. You are, I was thinking, <laughs> and I just didn't say it. <laughs> but we're going to have to work with um, marketing to... Okay determine like what dates are good. Hopefully it can be the same day each week because I think okay. it would be nice. But we'll be working with Frank Elliott and Larry Bell um, just to see, you know, what that would be like, what day of the week would be the best because they do so much. So we, we want to make sure we clear it. And, and if we run short, maybe our first one could be representatives from the committee with a moderator to discuss our what we're trying to do. Initiative. What our Wonderful. whole initiative is about. So maybe that should really yeah. be our first one and that would kind of spearhead us as to what's, what's to look forward to each week. So and, you'd and, be looking at doing that like at the end of January? Well, I'm pretty available, but I'm just thinking that if we want to get the momentum for this, it's got to be those of us who have been it, we've got to we've got to push ourselves first before we expect other people to do it for us. Okay. So did I understand you correctly in that you were saying maybe have some kind of a some um, from AAHI only to to get this going and to introduce the series and then right and that can be a thirty minute one. That can be a thirty minute one. It doesn't have to be an hour. Okay. But it would it would be the precursor to the other right. 
Exactly. It wouldn't, it wouldn't be it wouldn't be something that would be played or, or seen before each one. It would just be maybe January thirty right. first. You have this precursor, and then you get into February, and then we don't have to worry about it anymore. Okay. Yeah, that sounds good. I, I wanted to make sure I understood what you meant. Okay. Right. Uh, I think that's an excellent idea because it would almost replace the orientation that we didn't have last spring. So an introduction to the committee is a nov is a great idea. I think that's wonderful, Annette. Um, a wonderful suggestion, even if it happens as the first one in in February, because then you know these webinars can be any time. That's true. They can continue. It's not like you just have to have four. You know, we could plan one. I wouldn't say every week, but no. uh, perhaps we could have one every month uh, that that sort of motivates, stimulates, and get people engaged. But I think the first one is an excellent one to introduce the committee and what we're trying to do, because we really haven't done that to the public. Well, it would be great to know who may be interested in um, volunteering. <laughs> to do that for the introductory um, webinar. If they're volunteers, that would be great to know. And maybe it would take a couple of people to tag team to do it. If not, maybe one person could do it, especially if it's brief. I'll be part of the team. I don't want to be the main person, but I'll be, I'll be glad to be part of that team. Okay. Awesome. And Miss Miss uh, Miss Wanda, I will help uh, put that together with the the whole committee. Okay. Awesome. That'll be good. Thank you. Yeah, we need your energy because you do have the energy and you have the vision. So that would be good. That's yeah. right. And I, I also am bossy. That too. <laughs> <laughs> we need all of you. We need all all everybody different to the table. That's for sure. So. Right. That's great. I think that's great. So yes, can you please think about who would do the intro and and we'll be in touch with that too. We'll 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 talk about it via email or whatever platform we need. Okay, sounds good. January, heads up. All January right. is going to be busy. Yes, it is. Yes, it January. is. Okay. Merry right. Christmas, Happy Christmas. Merry Christmas. Yes, all of yes, the Merry Christmas. Anything else you have like in between? Yes. Happy holidays, especially Tom Flynn. I see you, Winston Salem State. Congratulations to Winston Salem yes, State on that wonderful, wonderful gift That's they got. Wonderful. Yes, yeah. thank you. Tom, I certainly hope a little of it will get to archives in your area. <laughs> we can <laughs> only help. We can only hope. You know, upgrade some of that wonderful equipment that you got, and you can give it to us. Well, anyway. <laughs> that'd be nice. Yeah, that'd be real nice. And thank you so much, everybody. Have congratulations. a great day. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Ms. Wanda. The Aggies, too. The Aggies, if there are any Aggies on the call, which I am Aggie not. Pride. Aggie yes. Pride. Oh, boy. Aggie Pride. Aggie Pride. Aggie Money, too. And Elizabeth yeah, City. And Elizabeth yeah. City, yep. Okay. That and was Elizabeth wonderful. City. That's wonderful. Great. So, Ms. Wanda, give me a call in a few minutes when you get I off. I shall. I shall. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.